So now we're going to look at alkenes and alkynes. Um, they happen to be a bit more interesting than the alkanes because they're more reactive. All of the naming rules that you learned previously with alkanes are still true. The only thing that's going to change um, is the ending. So to show that there's double bonds, instead of being ane at the end, it'll be ene. And to show that there's triple bonds at the end, instead of being ane, it'll be ein. Um, other than that, it's basically the exact same naming rules. So again, there's stuff here that you can read that's important, but not to do with naming, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. And here is perhaps the most important part. So what we want to do is now in order to identify our parent chain, what we're going to find is a continuous chain. So we're looking for the longest continuous chain that has both double bonded carbon atoms. So the longest carbon chain that has both double bonded carbon atoms is the one that's already been boxed out here. It's not this one. So this, even though I think it has, I guess it actually has the same number of carbons, is wrong because it doesn't have both of the double bonds. So because it doesn't have both of the double bonds, we can't include it in our parent chain, or can't make that our parent chain. So there's a bunch of examples here. So you'll see the um, two methylbutene. So again, we're trying to find parent chains that have both of the double bonds. So my parent chain is the butene. I'm gonna methyl group off of the second carbon. Now, notice that the numbering is also applied to the double bond. So when I'm numbering this, in fact, what I'm going to try and do is give the double bonded carbon atoms the lowest numbers every time. So we have to give the double bonded carbon atoms the lowest numbers. So one, two, three, four, it's no good because one, two, three, four. It gives us a lower combination of numbers for the double bond and also, in this case, for the alkyl group. Um, well, the next example here, again, we want both of the double bond did carbons in our parent chain. We got chloral and we got methyl groups. Now, this one, I think, is probably a better example of showing how the preference for the numbering goes to the double bond as opposed to the alkyl groups or substituent groups. So one, two, three, four, five is lower for the double bond. It's not the lower combination for the alkyl groups and the um, halogen that's here, but that's okay, because what's important is that the double bond gets the lower set of numbers. Now something that sometimes comes up is how come we only have one number identifying where the double bond is? Uh, it's understood that the double bond is between two carbons, and we're only gonna list the lowest number of the two carbons that has the double bond. Um, now there's mention here of cis and trans isomers, so it says there's no free rotation around the double bond. Um, there's cis and trans here. Uh, we'll talk more about cis and trans isomers on an activity that we'll do in class, so don't worry too much about cis and trans isomerism um, or geometric isomers right now. Okay, so take a moment, um, maybe try naming these. I'm going to name the first one, and then I'll pause it, and then write the names down for all of them. I'd recommend that you do the same. So on the first one here, we clearly have a double bond, um, so that's going to have to be in our parent chain. Um, I'm going to continue to do the somewhat strange um, bends to the parent chain just to help remind myself that the parent chains aren't always like just straight right to left across the page. So we'll notice that this is one, two, three, four, five, six carbons long. So it's a hex. Unlike previous ones, this has a double bond in it. The double bond makes the ending ene as opposed to ane. So we've got hexene. The double bond is located between carbons two and three, so two hexene. Notice that dashes are still being used to separate numbers from words. And we also have an alkyl group, which is found there. It's one carbon long. So we have five methyl to hexene. Okay, so I'd recommend pausing and then trying these and seeing how your answers compare with mine. 
Okay, so here are the answers for the uh, next four examples. Got two four dimethyl two pentene. Uh, remember again that the dimethyl part gets two numbers, one for each methyl group, and we're numbering this so that the double bond gets the lowest combo of numbers. So two three as opposed to what would be three four. Um, three hexene, five methyl two hexene, which is basically the exact same examples, two above, and then two butene. Okay, um, why don't you try pausing the video here and trying to draw the structures of the ones down below here. So we've got 5-methyl-2-hexene and then 2-2, or excuse me, 2-4-dimethyl-2-pentene. Okay, I realize that you probably could just look up above and uh, see the correct structures for these, but in case you didn't, or there's still a few things you can learn from them, even if you did. Uh, first is, notice that the carbons around the double bond have less than two hydrogens attached to them. Um, remember, carbons can form four stable bonds, so in these cases here, there's a bond to the carbons adjoining them, the hydrogen, and then the double bond to, the, like, to make the double bond. Um, this carbon here is where often mistakes are made on tests and quizzes because people will give this a carbon, or excuse me, give this carbon a hydrogen even though it already has four bonds. So just be aware that you don't overcommit your carbon atoms. Moving on to alkenes, there, there's really no difference between alkenes and alkynes. Um, the alkynes have a triple bond, which makes them even less stable than the alkenes. Uh, more on this when we talk about reactivity. Um, the ending, to make show the difference between an alkene and an alkyne, um, is the ion ending, so Y-N-E. Um, there's a couple examples here we can try. So first one here, just like with the double bonds, we want to have our triple bond as part of our parent chain. So our parent chain is there. Now the parent chain has to have triple bonds. As I was saying, our parent chain in this case is uh, five long and can be numbered like that or like this. Now we're going to use the black numbering because it gives the lower set of numbers to the triple bond. So we have a pentine. The double bond is between carbons 2 and 3, so 2 pentine. And I have a methyl group found off of carbon 4. So 4 methyl, 2 pentine. Try the next example on your own. So pause it, try it, and check. If you correctly identified the chain as a butyne, you are correct. Um, do note, however, that this name would be incorrect on a test or quiz because it does not have the number identifying where the double and triple bond is. So more correctly, this is called 1-butyne. There's a few more examples here, so try these, see how you do. Okay, so here we have 2,5-dimethyl-3-hexine and 2-pentine. So just be careful with 2-pentine uh, because sometimes this will be misnamed 3-pentine. Um, but remember, you can number from either the left side or the right side. It doesn't really matter. Um, in terms of drawing structures, there are a couple examples down here. Uh, the first two we've done, so let's just maybe look at the third and fourth. Um, so 4,4-dimethyl-2-pentine. So we're going to start with a 5-carbon parent chain. We'll put our triple bond between carbons 2 and 3. Now remember, each carbon can only form 4 bonds. So I like drawing it this way because it shows me the 4 bonds that these two carbons are f making. Now I know that these are carbons 2 and 3, so this makes this carbon 4. Off of carbon 4 I have a methyl group. Actually, 2 methyl groups. And then I will fill in the rest of these carbon bonds with hydrogens. So this carbon here has one bond, so it needs three more, so CH3. This carbon and this carbon, so the ones with the triple bonds are good. The ones with the methyls are good, just this last carbon over here. Now you can write this either as H3C, or if you'd like, you can put the CH3 down. It doesn't really matter. Uh, one butyne, so again, we're going to do four carbons triple bond between carbons 1 and 2. 
the first carbon needs a bond. Second carbon's good because it's got four. Third carbon could use two bonds, and the fourth carbon could use three. Cyclics are similar to um, straight chain hydrocarbons um, or the um, straight chained like alkenes, alkanes, alkynes. Um, there's a prefix to indicate that it's a cyclic, um, it's cyclo. Lots of examples on the page here. The uh, important thing to know that differentiates um, cyclics from like straight chain hydrocarbons is that any carbon can be carbon one. So you can just pick the carbon that you want to be carbon one. Um, the, you have to sort of follow the rules that we learned before. So for example, in um, the second example here, we're gonna number this one, oops, one, We can, we'll number it clockwise. Um, the important thing is, is that the double bonds or triple bonds should get your like lower set of numbers if they're present. And they have to be both carbons one and two. And then you're numbering clockwise or counterclockwise from that position. Um, same deal over here on the uh, cyclohexane. So it's a cyclohexane because it's six, and around, uh, six around. The methyl groups are found at carbons one and three. Um, they're found at those carbons and we number it in a way that gives them the lowest possible numbers. So it doesn't really actually matter if I number this as one, two, three, four, five, six, or I use the blue numbering. In either case you get the same name or same structure. And there's a final example here. So this is basically all of the naming information that you need to know. Um, Make sure that you do try the homework questions. You're going to get a lot of them, but it will make a big difference in terms of your understanding of organic chemistry if you get the naming down. Um, just a quick comment on this one. So the numbering doesn't matter in terms of what carbon we pick is a carbon one. So if you do have a choice, you're going to give the lower number to the thing that comes first in the alphabet. So one ethyl, two methyl cyclohexane. Um, but this is something that I'll just sort of come with experience.